Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. Thanks for joining me today. In today's video, I would like to talk about everything PLB and EPIRB related. And in particular, I give you my view of the new GME PLB, the MT610G. So hang around. I think in this video, I cover everything you need to know about PLB and EPIRBs. Let's get into it. If you follow my videos you probably know that I'm quite a fan of the GME products and especially their customer service and these PLB was given uh, to me from GME before release to test and give my feedback and to do a review. However it's not a paid review, I don't receive any monetary compensation and GME will not see the review before it's posted and has absolutely zero input. A personal locator beacon PLB is a small emergency device used in life-threatening emergencies. These could include pre-existing or new medical issues or severe injuries like head injuries or snake bites. You could also use it if you're trapped somewhere with fires around you or you have a remote vehicle failure with no way of self-rescue or recovery. A PLB is lightweight, small and practical, suitable for four-wheel drives and bushwalkers to carry in their vehicle or on person. PLBs contain a global positioning system, GPS, to transmit your location for at least 24 hours, making it easier and faster for emergency services to respond appropriately. When activated, a PLB transmits a distress signal, which is detected worldwide by the global satellite system COSPAS SARSAT, and it's then relayed to the appropriate emergency services. They will contact first the emergency contacts you specified in your registration to better understand your circumstances and then dispatch a rescue team to the coordinates the beacon transmits. Exactly how the response team is dispatched and how quickly it can reach you depends on the terrain and weather conditions. Helicopters, for instance, can only operate under clear weather conditions and within refueling range. Sometimes a response party is sent by four-wheel drive and foot, which means the response time vary and you will need to be prepared to wait. As well as transmitting the PLB's ID in location via satellite, the PLB also transmits a homing signal for the search and rescue team. This makes it easier to find the PLB in dense vegetation and around cliffs and is a feature which, for example, the SPOT or Garmin inReach does not have. I personally carry four different communication devices which could also help in emergencies. Number one, obviously I have my inbuilt car UHF and on top of that I also have a 5 watt handheld uh, GME UHF um, which I can take in a backpack or if I'm going walking for the day. Number two is I do have a satellite phone. Um, I use a Thoraya satellite phone simply for the fact that uh, I have only a $15 plan um, and anyone in Australia can pretty much call me for free on that satellite phone. On top of that I do have a spot tracker which I don't really use that much anymore because of the high ongoing monthly cost. Um, so I activate it from time to time for months, but yeah, I'm, I'm really umming and awing and the technology of the Spot 3 I have is also a little bit behind. So good example why I don't recommend having a Spot or Garmin inReach or whatever as your main PLB. Uh, that is my Spot 3, yeah, older model, worked perfectly fine though. I had to do a firmware update and after that firmware update now the spot pretty much stops working or it does work but it acquires no gps signal from time to time it does but then it loses it right away so yeah really it has become useless i paid now nearly a hundred bucks uh, to reactivate it and then as a last resort i obviously have a plb and personally I have a few PLBs. Um, I don't like to um, move PLBs from the backpack in the car, in my other car. So I have one for each designated location and I don't move them around and switch between locations. I have two cars, so in each car I have one PLB. 
and um, in my Land Cruiser I have this older GME uh, PLB. This is now the second one uh, I purchased and as you can see it is a fair bit bigger. For the car that's no big issue because it's living in my glove box. But for hiking it really was a bit too big. So I actually suggested to GME some time ago that it is time for a smaller GME PLB. And yeah, finally um, that was heard. Mind you, I don't think it was me uh, initiating that. GME would have known what the market does and uh, that probably was in development anyway. But nevertheless, I requested that probably one and a half years ago when I looked into the KTI, which also was an excellent PLB, very small, lightweight, but that has been discontinued now. So I was actually wondering what my replacement would be for hiking and then GME he came up with their new version and that is actually the perfect size for hiking or if you're mobile. The GME MT610G is a small compact PLB that weighs 166 gram. It transmits digitally on 406 megahertz and also has a 121.5 megahertz homing signal to assist in guiding rescuers to your precise location. By the way, that is something a spot or Garmin inReach does not have. The beacon has an integrated 72-channel GPS receiver and zero warm-up time. It uses a worldwide Cospas Sasa distress alert detection system. It has IP68 ingress protection and is buoyant so that you can use it in water. However, in comparison to an EPIRB, it's not self-leveling in water and will not necessarily keep the antenna facing upwards. It also features a high visibility strobe light which will aid locating it in the dark or under foliage. The unit has a 7 year battery life and 6 year Australian warranty. At present GME is the only Australian manufacturer of emergency beacons and has been designing, engineering and manufacturing EPIRBs and PLBs for over 30 years. In that time GME beacons were used to save hundreds of lives around the world. I have been carrying the MT610G now for a few weeks in my day backpack for quite a few walks and I really like the size, I like the one hand operation. It's a little bit of a pity that it doesn't have a 10 year battery life like the KTI had. However, I have an old MT410G and that is in its 10th year and still passes a battery test. However, obviously I wouldn't recommend using a PLB which is out of date. The MT410 came with a neoprene case. The case for the 610 you have to purchase extra. Overall I'm glad that we still have an Australian made PLB. It's a perfect size, it's good weight and yeah it seems to be a quality unit which I would expect from GME. Let me show you how quickly you can set up and operate the beacon with one hand. Push the antenna latch at the top of the PLB to release the antenna. Unfold the antenna orientate it towards the sky and push the red on and off button for two seconds. If you see the strobe light and red LED flashing every two seconds you know the PLB is activated. When you activate the PLB please always ensure clear exposure to the sky without any obstruction whether on land or water. So I have two different tests here. I can test the battery and then I can also test the GPS. So the battery I hold the button briefly for one second and then I see a light flash on top here. I don't know whether you can see that. I do it once more and it flashes a light so that means it is working. The second test you hold the green button for four seconds and that tests the GPS. However that doesn't work here because I'm down in a gully. So one of the important parts is really the location when you need to set off the PLB. Ideally it needs to be on a flat uh, even ground or a bit higher up. I'm a little bit in the gully here probably 50 meters down and uh, the GPS signal is not picking up because if I'm going to press it now for four seconds I have a red signal coming up here once and that shows me no GPS signal but that is expected here under foliage and in the gully. Yeah, now we can also see that uh, the long test came on uh, one two three four so I also have now satellite it seems yes so if I would set off now the beacon down here I would have no issues and help will arrive at some stage.
Keep in mind, if in doubt, you could always use the GPS self-test to see whether you actually receive a GPS signal in that location and whether it's okay to set off the PLB here. Any PLB really has one main disadvantage, uh, that it is one-way communication. So with a pure PLB, you, you can't text back, you can only set it off and then you need to wait. Uh, but you can't give really a uh, detailed description of your situation and so on. And that is the reason why I also always carry a satellite phone. And the satellite phone would be the first emergency communication device I would use if possible. But um, that's how it often is. If something really goes wrong, it is usually an accumulation of things going wrong and it is not one single thing going wrong. If you just have an accident and your mobile phone is working, uh, you know, no issue, you use your mobile phone. However, if you have an accident and your mobile phone, for example, is broken, then I have this. Or if I go on hikes. The satellite phone is too bulky to carry, so I carry a PLB in addition to my mobile phone in case I don't have reception. So why do I prefer a PLB over Spot or Garmin inReach, which I think they have their place and it is quite handy if you can send out text messages and so on. But to be honest, there I rather use a satellite phone where I can actually speak and it's probably actually cheaper than, than in Garmin inReach or Spot 3. But the big uh, advantages of a PLB is that you have a battery life of seven years here in this one. And uh, I had plenty of occasions when my spot ran out of batteries and while I carry spare batteries and so on. Again, it's all stuff which can go wrong. To be honest, the only reason why I still carry the Spot 3 from time to time is so that my family and my good mate uh, Dennis Battelle can follow us online and see where we currently are. And I definitely also see the benefits of carrying a Spot 3 or a Garmin inReach if you do a lot of hiking and space and weight is a premium. I still would carry though a dedicated PLB as the final emergency solution. A PLB doesn't need any maintenance really and it also has no ongoing costs. So you purchase once a PLB and that means it will last you, depending on the battery, for the next seven years. After that you can actually get the battery replaced by GME. To be honest, after seven years the technology has moved on. I just would get the later model of this. If you are planning to purchase your first PLB, let me break it down into five simple steps. After you purchase the PLB from a vendor of your choice, head over to beacons.amsa.gov.au to register your PLB. Ensure you choose suitable emergency contacts and fill in all other information required. Read the manual and familiarize yourself with the beacon and its operation as well as the self-test procedures. Ensure everyone traveling with you also knows how to operate the PLB in case of an emergency. Number three, place the beacon in an accessible, suitable location where you can easily retrieve it in an emergency or accident. Make sure your passengers and travel companions know where the PLB is located and how to activate it. Number four, do a yearly self-test and you may also test before a big remote trip. But keep in mind the self-test uses battery so don't go overboard with it. An often asked question, especially from people who are new to carrying a PLB, is when should it be deployed? In what kind of situation would you really set the beacon off? Let me give you a few examples when I would set off a PLB. Deploying a PLB should always be your last option after you exhausted everything else. And only if you or someone else is in grave imminent danger. To give you an example, in 2012, two remote workers got bogged in the Simpson Desert. They made the unwise decision to leave their car and walk back and one of them perished along the way because of dehydration. So that was a perfect scenario where you set off your PLB, stay with your car and wait for rescue. Should I buy a PLB or an EPIRB? I often see this question in various Facebook forums. So I give you my take on it. An EPIRB and a PLB function the same way, but an EPIRB is specifically designed for marine operations and is usually registered to a vessel. An EPIRB is required for every recreational vessel heading out more than two nautical miles from the coast. 
The main differences are that an EPIRB is bigger, heavier, it will float and always point the antenna towards the sky. It also can have additional features like auto activation if in contact with water or upside down. It will transmit for at least 48 hours, given you are likely floating somewhere in the ocean with changing positions. However, unless you own a boat and a four-wheel drive and can't afford to have two separate devices, I definitely would recommend a PLB for land-based adventures simply for the fact that it is more portable, it is lighter and more versatile. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope I covered everything PLB and EPUB related. If I have missed something or if you have some other ideas, Leave me a comment in the comment section. I'm always keen to hear other people's feedback and learn from that as well. If you enjoy my videos, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you can, maybe even consider becoming one of my Patreon supporters. And with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can really help me make these videos. You also have a few extra perks. You can get direct access and can ask me questions via the Patreon platform. You get early access to my videos. And from time to time, I give goodies away to my Patreon supporters. Stay well, and I hope to see you along the tracks.